Can I get your attention, please? It's so nice to see that unity. We're all here to honor Donald Sanders, our fantastic security guard who has worked here for many years. We wanted to gather today to celebrate his life and honor him. We do have a program today, and we'll have some opportunities for some of you to say a few things. Now, Don's presence on campus not only has impacted every single one of the people who work here, but also staff, students, and the community at large. Even people who work in the graveyard shifts, he has impacted every single person on campus, and he has been a big part of every one of our hearts. We wanted to recognize him and show our love for him. We'll go ahead and start with our Pledge of Allegiance. We have a couple of our students coming up. Is that better in the back? Everyone, please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Brissa and Nathaniel, for the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a couple of students who would like to do a song in honor of Dawn. stand. And follow me.
Thank you so much. That was an inspiring song. Next up, we have our ASBG president, who would like to say a few words. Hello everyone. Hi. How's everyone doing? My name is Usama. I am the uh, president of our student body government. And wow, we all have a huge heart for Don, Don Sanders. This school, I mean, had awesome vibes because of him. He was always there for us. No one will ever replace Don, someone like Don. The way that he was so helpful with the students, always making sure we were okay. He was everywhere at all times. He was that person that would drive you up in his car, drive you around campus. He was someone you looked up to. He was always making sure that we were all safe here. That was his number one concern. And now we still wish he was around, but he's not. And now, um, wow, it, it's just a sad, sad moment. But what we can do here on campus is to see that change, do something, everything that we do, be it in the name of Don, celebrate him. I think that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Thank you, Usama. For student life, we have a security department and we have our security guard, Ed Ortiz, who'd like to say a few words. Ed Ortiz. I'm the lead security guard here at the school. I um, just want to share a couple of stories about Don. Um, wow, December 7th, when I when, when I found out, you know, of his accident, you know, I was really heartbroken. Um, pain that you can't describe. Uh, <clears throat> just sad, angry, mad. Um, it didn't make sense to me, like you know, like you guys thought, I'm sure as well. Um, come full circle, this past Sunday, it made sense to me all of a sudden. Well, Kobe needed security in heaven, right? So, you know, he's right there with, with Kobe giving him security. So, um, jokes to the side, um, man, I love Don so much. I uh, not only saw him as a coworker, but I saw him as a friend. And me personally, he was my best friend. I don't know how he felt about me, but I'm proud to call him my best friend for the last 11 years that I knew him. Uh, he was a blessing in my life, and um, and uh, it's a tough pill to swallow. Um, <clears throat> but I've uh, had a lot of support from you guys, and that's really been comforting and helpful, and I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Um, he, uh, I was just so excited to see him on a daily basis when he would come in to relieve me. Um, <clears throat> I said this earlier, but uh, he would always come in with what looked like a carry-on. And it was his uh, backpack and his, you know, his lunch and all his goodies. And I'd see him from a distance coming up the A building stairs. And I immediately just smiled and I would just race to the front door and I'd open it up and I'd wait for him to come up. And as soon as he was in earshot, I would say, Don Juan, hey, you know, how's it going? And he would always read me back and he'd walk into the office and he'd always have something good to eat, you know, or it would smell good at least. And um, I was always ask him, Don, Don, where'd you get that from? That smells so delicious. And so, uh, you know, and then of course we'd uh, always talk and have long conversations and I'm gonna miss that about Don. Um, <clears throat> we would share things with each other that we wouldn't share things about with anyone else. Um, I can't share with you his stories he shared with me and I know he wouldn't share the stories that I told him about me with you or I would share with him. So, um, but I'm gonna miss that about him. Um, I no longer, I have other coworkers and friends, but 
I don't have anyone in my life that I can do that with like I did it with Don. That's how strong our bond and connection was. Um, I want to talk about the, in 2015, he gave me a call and he shared with me that, um, you know, hey, Ed, you're not going to believe what just happened. And I had already known about what was going to happen. I was told about a week prior, but we called in Don to come into work on a, his regular day off. And we just said we needed some coverage, but that wasn't the truth. The truth is that year, uh, the senior class was dedicating the yearbook to him. So he called me up when the event was over and he had said, Ed, you're not going to believe what happened. And I just played dumb and I was like, what, Don? And he says, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm standing in the back and they called me up to the stage and on the stage there's a uh, like a box on a chair and they asked me to open it up and I have, I'm, I'm like, okay, what do you want me to open up this box for? And he tells me that as he opened it up, he saw a yearbook and he uh, took the yearbook out and he's like, okay, well, cool, a yearbook. You guys are giving me a yearbook. And he said, some, he said that someone had told him, no, open it up, look in it. And he said he opened it up and he saw the dedication to him uh, that the senior class was presenting him with. And he says that he, he just, he was just so surprised and happy. And he says that he just started to kind of like break down and cry a little bit. And he says that when that moment hit, that all the, the senior class got up on stage with him and surrounded him and kind of gave him a group hug. And I just thought that was a beautiful thing. It really showed uh, the love for, uh, that the students had for Don. And, um, and I know for a fact that Don loved the students here, like extremely like loved them. Um, he would constantly remind me of that. And I would always throw in, yeah, Don, but remember you're also here to take care of the state buildings and the staff. And he would always, tell me yeah but student safety's first and i'm like you know you're right so to the students uh i want to say thank you for showing them all the love throughout the years and um and and he had that much love for the staff as well and i'm going to miss don and i know you guys will too um i have many other stories uh, about don and maybe when i'm you know talking to you guys individually i'll share some of those with you i don't want to take up too much time but i just want to share that with you guys and thank you for hearing my memories of don Now, I just wanted to mention, you know, if you were to see someone from a distance, can't really make out who they are, but you can identify who they are by the, by the way they walk. You know, sometimes you know the particular sounds of how they walk. Identify someone. How I identify Don? The security cart. I, I know it's Don just by how he's moving, how he's driving. Instantly, I know it's him. Everyone knew who he was where he was, where he stopped. We knew who, exactly who it was because of how he would drive the cart. Not having him on campus is a huge hole for all of us. We have Laura Edwards with a few words from the athletic staff. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to the family. Hi. I'm happy that you guys were able to make it today. Thank you so much for being here. When I first met Don, uh, that was August 2017, uh, when I was initially hired as athletics PE supervisor. One of the first people I saw, he was standing right over here outside the map, and we had this room full of people, and he was right there by the door, dressed the part, acts the part Ooh, does he act the part 100 percent. you know his job he is a great security guard don's a big guy right physique wise right we all know not that he's big i mean he's got a big chest big arms 
Is it just the fiscal aspect that I'm speaking of? No. What other facet am I speaking of? What else is big? His kindness, his personality was massive. Massive. Did he sign fluently? Not necessarily. But all of us understood what he was trying to say to us at all times, right? Am I right? What else was massive and enormous about Don? His heart. Yes. His heart was huge. And I know that he would tell you guys to fist pump each other. So fist pump to the person to your right and left, give him a fist pump in honor of Don. Yeah? That's how he bonded with many of you, with all of you. Mm-hmm, awesome, thank you. I love it. A wave of fist pumps. Oh. Oh, even one for myself. Well, thank you, Ed. Sunday morning, when I received that text message, I was in disbelief. I thought, oh, clearly not the dawn I'm thinking of. No, that can't be. No, that, no, that can't be. And they reassured me, no, dawn. I said, wait a minute, big dawn? Yes, Laura, big dawn. And I lost it. I lost it. Throughout that entire day, questions. What happened? Why couldn't he have left a few minutes earlier? Why couldn't he have left a few minutes later? Just if, 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 I mean, ifs galore, and you just, you have to push it aside. I'm not religious, per se, but God was ready for him. There were bigger plans in heaven for him. Now, he's our angel. He's looking down on us. We're all here on campus. We used to see Don walking or driving, and you immediately felt safe. We knew he was there. You never had to worry with his presence. A couple times, in fact, I was in a situation where it, you know, it got a little disgruntled uh, between myself and another in individual. Don was there in a flash, and I just remember feeling so relieved I mean, again, he didn't sign, but you could tell what he was trying to say, and that person left. And I just felt relieved knowing that he was by my side. He was a protector. He kept you safe, just as he did everyone else in this room. Think about it, guys. That's how impactful he has been to all of our lives here on campus. It's a massive loss for us, no doubt about it. However, there's a massive gain, if you think about it. We got to know him, and that is our gain. That is to our advantage. We got to know him during his short time on earth. Bless his heart. You're very fortunate to have Don in your lives. So bless the family. We will always remember him. Thank you for your time. And the athletics department. Oh, did Don love his sports? You know where he used to stand during basketball games, during baseball games, during volleyball games, during cheer? He had his typical position where he sat and watched the games or practices. And you knew, oh, John's right over there, guys. We all knew where we could rely on him. Over in the softball field, he had a position, baseball field, basketball. He had his positions marked on every part of this campus. Right, coaches? You guys know. He cared about you very much as well, all of us also talked about his son and how proud he was of you. It's true, he talked a lot about you. So I know I never met you, but I feel like I know you, as well as his wife. He was a family man, that was evident. Thank you for allowing us to have Don in our lives. Thank you. Next, we have our elementary department. We have two students that will come up here on stage. So we have Gabrielle and Xavier. So Gabrielle Valencia and Xavier Ramos. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you guys, come on up. Yep, that's you.
two years ago when I was outside playing sports, I'd walk by and I'd see Don and he would fist pump me while I went into practice and he was always there to keep us safe. <laughs> Hello, I looked up to Don. I mean, he, he had a huge heart. When the kids would line up, he would fist bump or high five all of us. Don has known me since I was a little bitty thing. He would also give candy to the students, some of the adults too, but he always had candy for us and I'm gonna miss him. Thank you. Thank you so much students. We have Joshua Seipert from middle school. Hi everyone. Oh, all right. Hello everyone. So there's supposed to be a girl up here as well. Uh, do you want to join me up here? Yeah, you. Come on. Brittany. 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 Thank you. All right. So Brittany's gonna come on up. Thank you. Great, so the interpreters are watching, perfect. So memories about Dawn. Uh, it's been feeling different here. You know, the fist pumps, um, he'd always go to the games. He'd go to my cottage where I lived. Uh, we'd play games there, we'd do activities. And anytime you would call a security guard and a door opened, he was always there. What do you remember about Dawn? I know I've only seen him for a short period of time because I started here in the fall. I met him when we were when we were doing a play and he would just make me laugh just by how he just his facial expressions and I thought wow just a really friendly guy so when I see him around he always would wave to all of us right right and in the sixth grade I remember seeing him I was like uh and a girl said go up to him he's a nice guy I'm like really and then ever since that moment oh my he's the sweetest security guard ever awesome thanks guys and um yeah, thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, next up. Uh, from Student Life, uh, the Student Life Council President, we have Nicholas Larissa. Wow. Don Sanders was extremely important on this campus. He would check on each one of the cottages, elementary, middle school, high school. He would walk in the building and acknowledge the students and staff and spread that positive energy. So it's something that really touched me. He was interactive with staff and students alike. He had a lot of positive, positive attitudes that he would like to share. He'd go to his, his office, but he wouldn't just stay there he would still be driving all around campus just making sure that the entire campus was safe and the environment was good and everything was good on this campus. It was important for me to notice that. Don is an amazing security guard. Also, he would also go to the cafeteria at lunch and dinner. Most of the time at dinner is when I would see him. He would walk in and the students would look at him and be like, hey, it's Don. Because he would have that positive spirit and that positive energy say hello to the staff and the students and have that time with him. 
some of the students might not be happy and might be sitting there. He would pat him on the back and just that instant eye contact, you would get rid of all of that negativity and be positive. Don would share that bit of positivity from him with you and you would feel so much better. We wanted to honor Don. He is the best individual on this campus. Extremely impressive how well he's taken care of us. Thank you. Our student life staff, we have some counselors that would like to come up. This photo, this is the last photo that I have with Don. We had a staff meeting with this group of individuals. We went outside and we took a picture. It was that Thursday before he passed. So this is a very, very important picture to me. So Julie, do you have a few words that you would like to say? Well, the reason, this was the team that would work with security often. would communicate with them to make sure that everything was safe. Anything that happened in the evening that was an impact on these staff members Don was aware of. Right, I mean, this is hard. Don was such an awesome man. What a huge loss. He will never be forgotten. He had the ability to always make us and the students feel safe here. He was always around for every department here on campus at different events. He was always there. Student life, when we hosted parties, you'd look, there's Don. He would just magically appear. I mean, you could guarantee that he would be anywhere and everywhere at all times. Cafeteria, if you're there, he's there. Just a short story I have, uh, something that I'll hold dear to my heart is one weekend, uh, I was driving on the 91 freeway and <clears throat> something hit my car. It was a uh, metal pipe that hit my car on the freeway. So I had to pull over, of course, and I ended up getting a really bad dent to the right side of my car. So over that weekend, I ended up, you know, of course, coming to work Monday. My car was parked out there in the parking lot. Don approaches me. Hey, Peter, is your car okay? You got a big dent on the passenger side. I was like, oh, Don, yeah, it happened over the weekend. Yeah, everything's fine. I mean, that's how much he cared. He patrolled this campus. He really was concerned. Did this happen on campus? No, of course. No, no, no. It happened over the weekend. But that's how impressive his work was here. He will be greatly missed by so many of us. I also wanted to add that Don would always borrow my cart at work because security's cart was broken down for a while. So he always kept it immaculate and full of gas. When security got their new cart, my cart became a little dirty. He would be on me. Let me wash your cart, Julie. Let me fill up the gas for you. Just little things like that is way above and beyond his duties. His the community and the school and the staff at large, everyone was inspired by him. He also kept the security group together and focused. His loss is definitely missed. And I appreciate that he was with us for so many years. Well, you guys kind of said it all. I, it just, I feel like I lost a family member. I mean, this is our family and we've lost a family member. You saw him every day. We'd always banter, kid around. I called him the club, Don the club. He'd come in, music was bumping in his car. And it always felt so good. Now that it feels like just this whole, like something is amiss and that spirit will always live on here. We will always remember him. Everyone else has mentioned what I wanted to say, but I wanted to also mention that he was really good with staff and he knew each person individually. He knew what each person's skills and strengths were. He would joke with one person in a certain way and he would joke with another person in a different way. Not many people would take the time to do that. Now, a story that I have of Don, we'd always play peekaboo. 
he would always say, hey, how come uh, you're late? Usually, usually I get off work at 12 or one o'clock. He'd be like, hey, get out, go home. Never missed a day. It was always on me to go home when it was my time off. At one time, I realized I didn't want Don to know that I was working late. So I was kind of playing a little peekaboo. I'd go around the corner because I didn't want Don to see me. But he would always find me. I'm like, how did you know I was here? He's like, oh, your car's still here. Ah, identified me by my car. The next time I moved my car to the other side of campus, office lights were off. I talked to the, uh, the campus staff, but again, he still found me. I give up, you win. Now I realize he's not here. It's been really, really hard. I enjoy his company, playing games with me and interacting with me, but he loved everyone. The students that I have in elementary and middle school, their faces would just light up when they see Don walk in the room. It's a huge impact for all of our students and staff. We do have a gift by an alumni and one of the first students enrolled in CSDR, Ms. Pat Davis. everyone my name is Pat Davis I'm sure many of you know uh, that I was one of the first 56 students enrolled here in CSDR on February 2nd 1953 I graduated in 1963 I left and then I came back to work here in 2000 I worked here for 17 years and I retired a few years ago As the years went on, there was that fateful day of Don's passing. It really threw me for a loop. It couldn't possibly be. Don? It took me a long, long time to even wrap my brain around it. I decided I wanted to do something. So I gathered t-shirts from the staff and students and I wanted to make something. I wanted to make a quilt. So I have this quilt that I would like to show you. Of course, it is scarlet and gray, our school colors. The other side of the blanket is also for Dawn. There's a picture of Dawn here in the center, printed on fabric. I gathered all of the sports that are provided here on campus that Dawn would always attend. We have our Hoy basketball, our Hoy baseball tournament, our clerk basketball tournament. We have volleyball, athletics in general, football, track and field, wrestling, soccer. We have more wrestling. We have the car show. Mopar, he loved working the car show. Basketball, softball, track and field. We have some of the shirts with our logo, baseball, cross country, and our cheerleaders. This was his love. He went to each and every one of the games. It was girls basketball. Don typically would stand right by that door back there, up against the wall, and just watch. 
At the same time, he would check to make sure everyone was behaving themselves and they were in the safe place. He wouldn't stay long. He would go and survey the campus and check to make sure everything is good, and then he'd come back. Same thing with the baseball field, softball field. The black background here, Don would typically wear all black, black hat, black shirt, black undershirt, black pants, black socks, black shoes, black watch, everything. So this is a gift to the family. It's hard for me to let it go, but I want to thank the family for sharing him with us. I will make sure the family receives this blanket before they leave today. Thank you so much. All right, next we have our superintendent, uh, Nancy Leibuck Gaiman, to share a few remarks. What a beautiful blanket. Thank you, Pat. That is a beautiful quilt, wow. I got the chills, thank you, wow. Okay, um, I'm so glad that we were able to be here this afternoon to celebrate Dawn's life. A few things that I wanted to share. So I've worked here for almost four years. Essentially I've known him for about three and a half years to be exact. Dawn's role Bear that in mind. Don was not just a security guard. He was so much more than a security guard. And I want to talk about that. His role as a security guard and the other facets that he served here and how impactful he was on a daily basis. He was one of those security guards that would check the entire campus what was going on all around campus and inside campus. He knew every single person. He knew everyone's cars. If you left your lights on, if you left your engine on, he knew, knew who to approach. He never had to come to the administration building to say, hey, somebody's car is on, here's the license plate. No, he knew who he needed to see. That says a lot about how attentive he was. He made sure that he had a personal relationship with each and every one of you, students, staff, and community members, which is pretty powerful. At school, he was at the cafeteria at lunch. He would do his check-ins. Sometimes students behave mischievously. Don would know about it. He doesn't receive incident reports in his capacity, 
But being who Don is, he would know because often staff would follow up with Don. Hey, Don, do you mind just talking to that student, giving your support? And sure enough, students would listen to Don. He had these, this positive aura about him. And I'll miss that. It's a huge loss not having him around. It feels jaded. I mean, you know that mantra, having him around every day, it, you feel that loss now. You feel that he's left us. My building, the administration building in the evening, sometimes I'd come back to campus and I work in the evenings, late at night. He always checked on me. He would personally come in and check on me to make sure I was okay. He and I would have periodic meetings as well. In the evenings, without an interpreter, he was pretty outstanding at just writing back and forth and gesturing. I didn't need an interpreter when it came to communicating with Don. He was able to see past that and was able to communicate in any way that was needed. I'm not sure if you realize, but the events that we've hosted here since, who, well, when Don was here, who would push us out? Like even over this past Monday, who kicked us all out after dancing with the Death Stars? Nobody. So everybody kind of stayed later than normal. Don knew how to kick everybody out. Lights off, get out, go home. So everybody would hurt, because everybody just wants to stay and talk, but Don knew you gotta go. He knows the deaf community loves to talk. He's, Don's like, you know what? There's always tomorrow, go home. He truly was our giant caretaker here. From the most trivial things to the more massive things, he was there. One thing to bear in mind, he's still here. He will always be here. I personally feel his presence and I hope that others feel the same way. It's just a feeling. You know, you know, you know he's around. I wanna say thank you to the two of you for sharing him with us. He will always be a part of our community and I feel responsible because Don had shared, you know, I have a wife and son, wife and son, wife and son. I mean, it's all he talked about. He talked about you guys were clearly his number one. He loved working here. He looked forward to being here, but that's because of the love and support that he received from the two of you at home. It was clear in what he did, how he interacted and what he said. So I want to honor Don by making sure that you two are always okay. So please be here, we'll support you in any way possible. You are our family members as well. Much love. We miss Don tremendously and he will never, ever, ever be forgotten. We love you, Don. Before we close, just some final remarks. This is really awesome, but what's more awesome is the effect that he's had on you guys, and that's how we keep him around. Dominic and I don't do this under our own power. It is our faith in God that's kept us strong and the support and the love we have received from everyone here. There are no words. I will never forget the day that they knocked on my door and told me that he was no longer with us. I didn't believe it either. They described him, I thought, no, that's not him. They described his car. I said, no, everybody has that car. Everybody has a silver Altima. But when they said he had a Department of Education, long sleeve black shirt on, I knew it was real. The second hardest call I had to make after calling his dad was calling CSDR. 
because I knew the impact that it would have on everybody here because this was the spot to be for him when he wasn't with us. And for that, we are forever grateful that it may be one for you guys, but we gain a whole nother family. So I just want to thank you for everything. I do want to share that picture of him holding the baby. He was known as a baby whisperer. I don't care what kid, what age, where we were, didn't matter if they were crying or acting bad. He had a way of just making them melt, be good, stand by their parents like this. And it will be okay. This picture right here, this strong man, most people don't know, I used to call him Bam Bam. Because he is so strong in every way. There was a time after I had had him, I had a cesarean. Some kind of way I fell on my back and I couldn't get up. Felt like that commercial. He walked over with one hand and he yanked me up. I said, oh, I meant help me. Not stand me straight up on my feet. He'll forever be my strong man. Dominic and I, thank you. And we'll get through it. I live by a motto, throw that rock in the, the water and it, the rippling effect. Our lives will be rippling effects for years to come for what he has imparted into us and the person and the man he was. So let's take that and we're gonna all go forward and do great things in his honor, in his memory. And we'll be the better for it because we'll have a, what would Don do? What would Don say? We had an issue with a Kobe jersey. We said, what would daddy do? This is what daddy would do. So that's how we are going forward. So we thank you. And this was awesome. That blanket is a token of love so deep down inside that I thank you. It's not even big enough to say the love that was poured into that. And when I saw that Mopar in there that you and I talked about, because I didn't have anything, oh, that made me melt. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your time today and uh, if we could just take a moment of silence Okay, well that concludes this program. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Everyone take care and please continue thinking of Tommy.